The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks, today on Aging Horizons we're going to be talking with several local ombudsmen. Have you ever heard that word before? Do you know what it means? Well, they're advocates. They're advocates for folks who live in facilities and who may need just a little bit of a resource to get what they need and be happy in their homes. We have a lot to talk about today, so please stay with us. Respite. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. Will you provide it? The hard part about having outside help is that there's not a lot of people out there who can do that kind of work. We've been very fortunate that our Bonnie has been with us for seven years. I don't know what I'd do without her. I need her in our lives. She's our second mother. And I can't help but think of her that way. To find out how to change lives, including your own, call 800-224-6034 or visit respite.mt.gov. I have so many questions about power of attorney. Well, some powers of attorney are for finances and others are for healthcare decisions. A power of attorney designates an agent who would make decisions on your behalf. While making a power of attorney, you have the ability to control your agent's power. You also have the ability to decide when that POA would take effect. Wait, am I giving away all my rights? Power of attorney isn't a license to make any decision for you, just those that you've specified. Your agent should be somebody that's working in your best interest, but it should also be somebody that you would trust. What if they try to abuse their power? Protective measures like third-party accounting secondary signatures, defined spending and gifting limits can help protect against financial exploitation. An agent's powers can always be limited by a customized power of attorney, and they can be revoked by you or the court if the power of attorney is abused. So carefully drafted estate planning documents can help ensure that your finances are monitored, but not abused. If you or someone you know is being exploited, please report to Aging Services Bureau at 844-277-9300 or the legal service developer at 1-800-332-2272. This message sponsored by the DPHHS Aging Service Bureau. Summer in Montana is a great time to visit your local farmer's market. Enjoy the social atmosphere while shopping for a wide variety of fresh, locally grown produce. Together with both WIC and Senior Farmer's Market Nutrition Programs, you help feed your family five or more daily servings of fruits and vegetables for better health. You also help local ag producers and enhance the state's economy. So, for summer fun that's nutritious and helps Montana's economy, shop at your local farmer's market. Hi folks, welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimmy Everman, and today we're going to be talking about ombudsman. And that might be a word you've never heard before, but maybe what you do recognize is advocate. And that's what those ombudsmen are all about. They are advocates for people living in facilities. Um, and we have several great guests with us today. Our, our first for this segment is Mary Dalton. And Mary Dalton is the local ombudsman out of Missoula. Hi, Mary, nice to have you. Hi, Kimmy. Thanks for having us today. Sure. We're glad to be here. So can you just give us some basics, Mary? I mean, you know, the ombudsman, that's kind of a, a not a very often used word. So a lot of people don't even know what it means. Um, and, you know, what does an ombudsman do? What's the program all about? Yeah, so the Montana Ombudsman Program is a statewide program. The Ombudsman Program is authorized under the Older Americans Act, and we are basically advocates for residents who live in long-term care. So that would be residents living in assisted living or skilled nursing facilities and critical access hospitals um, around the state. We provide education and assistance and advocacy to the residents and their families to ensure that their dignity and quality of life needs are met. So our local Missoula Ombudsman Program is uh, one of many programs here at Missoula Aging Services. And our mission is to support the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. So like you said, the word ombudsman basically means advocate. So a long-term care ombudsman is an advocate 
specifically for people who live in assisted living and nursing homes. And we um, advocate for the residents and the resident rights. Yeah, and, you know, Mary, um, one of the things that's a real myth that we need to address today is don't people just lose their rights when they go into these facilities? Well, we, we would hope people don't believe that, but that's kind of a feeling out there. Will you talk about that for a minute? Sure. So anyone who lives in a long-term care facility is still a citizen of the United States, just like you or I. So none of their human rights or civil rights go away. And in fact, the resident rights are guaranteed under federal law. And the state of Montana adopts those regulations for the resident rights. So in addition to all of our human rights and all of our civil rights, residents who live in long-term care are actually given additional rights and or the rights are specified of how that would apply to someone who lives in long-term care. How would your civil rights and your human rights apply to you if you were living in long-term care? Right. Now, one part of this that I think we should also address is involuntary uh, discharge, because that can sometimes happen. And, and how does that, how is that affected by a resident's rights? Yeah, so, you know, under the, the resident rights, which are guaranteed under federal law, there, there are numerous rights, which include your right to dignity, your right to respect, your right to be fully informed, your right to participate in decisions that impact your daily life. Um, one of those resident rights is your right to remain in the facility. So if a facility has a concern that they would, for some reason, be giving someone an involuntary discharge notice, there are all kinds of regulations around those discharge notices that need to be followed specifically by the facility. And if the facility is not following those step by step, very comprehensively and very completely, that makes those discharge notices invalid essentially right. it's almost like if you think about living in your own apartment and your landlord gives you an eviction notice well if the eviction notice is not complete and has all of the pieces of the law in there it becomes invalid exactly. and it's the same when you're in long-term care okay and mary we just have a couple of minutes left of this segment can we talk about what are the barriers that people face when they want to speak up, but they might be afraid? Yeah, that is a really great question because a lot of people, you know, they are intimidated to speak up by the very nature of going into long-term care. You're in an unfamiliar environment. Perhaps you've had some type of an incident where you're not at your best. Maybe you've had a fall and broke your hip or perhaps you're, um, just not yourself, you're incapacitated or, you know, whatever the reason that you need to be in long-term care just complicates all of the, your abilities to, to speak up and speak out on your own behalf. Um, the fear of retaliation is yeah. very great among residents in long-term care because they rely on the, the staff to take care of them. Right. You know, sometimes people are bedridden to the fact they can't even get out of bed on their own. And right. so if they were to bring a complaint against a staff person, that might leave them wondering, gosh, who's going to take care of me at the end of the day? And how will I get my basic needs met? How will I get up, you know, to get my meals and exactly. get to the restroom? Exactly. You know, Mary, we didn't have enough time. We have more to talk about in just a few seconds left. So just one, we're going to put your number up again on the screen, the 1-800 number to make sure that folks can get a hold of you. And thanks so much for being here today. And we'll, we're going to have some others in this segments coming up. But thanks for all you do. Thank you so much, yeah. Kimmy. And folks, uh, this is your advocate. If you're living in a facility and you need an advocate, you can reach out to the ombudsman and they can give you a hand. Hey, come on back.
think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or adult protective services at 1-844-277-9300. I was the last guy you'd expect to get diabetes. I was a competitive runner and I always took care of myself. So when I was diagnosed, it kind of threw me. But it's really encouraging to know I'm not alone with it. There are a lot of other people going through the same things as I am. It takes some effort. You have to keep after it. Exercise, meds, and diet are the key. But there are a lot of folks who want me to succeed. Diabetes is not the end of the world. With effort and attitude, you can have a normal life. Flight 109. Is that Evil Knievel on the runway? Whoa, Daredevil! You need a Montana Real ID to fly. Go to mtrealid.gov to make an appointment. Looks easier than jumping a canyon. Smile. I see you changed your name from Robert to Evil. Did you bring your name change documentation? I'm not trying to pull a stunt. Got the paperwork right there. Go to mtrealid.gov. Now I can fly! It's that easy! Hi everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. Uh, we're here talking about ombudsmen today, and the ombudsmen are an extremely important uh, advocate for people that live in facilities, for older people that live in facilities. Uh, and next, uh, what we have is a couple of actual boots on the ground um, ombudsmen, uh, and we're going to talk just a bit about what they love the most about uh, their jobs and, the, and this program because uh, there's lots to love about it. Um, first of all, we have Irina Pulse. Irina, welcome. Uh, and Irina, you're the regional uh, ombudsman for Area 1, which is based out of Glendive, correct? Right. Okay. Right. Thank, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then we also have Karen Ulrichson. And Karen, you're the regional ombudsman for Area 2, which is based out of Roundup. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome. Um, let's start with you, Karen. You know, um, you had helped me with some notes prior to our show today. And one of the things that you really uh, um, focused on was freedom of choice, that people don't lose their freedom of choice when they go into a facility. And you have, a, you have a, just a super sort of list that, that I'd like you to share with our audience. Sure. Um, I like to help the resident express their freedom of choice. So even their name, what would you like to be called? Mr., Mrs., first name, nickname, um, what time you want to wake up? You know, how late do you want to stay up? What time go to bed? What you want to wear? Uh, things of what time do you want to take your shower, your bath? Freedom of choice for your food. There's always an alternate choice to participate in activities. And if activity, if you can't go to the activity, the activity then comes to you. Uh, you have a right to uh, keep and work with your money, keep your own money, take care of everything financially. You have a freedom to open your own mail. And you have a freedom to decorate your room, which is your home. And um, so those are the freedoms I like to help our residents express and walk with them if they would like to make some changes. Right. You know, and Karen, I, I'm struck by your list because, it, you know, I don't live in a facility and it, 
would never occur to me that I didn't get to choose what I wanted to wear or what time I wanted to go to bed or get up. So thanks so much for sharing that with us because that's very impactful. Um, and Irina, let's, let's just uh, talk with you for a couple of minutes. Um, you're out of Area 1, which is out of Glendive. Um, and one of the things that you wrote being passionate about was the resident rights. Can you talk about that a bit? Yes. I am passionate specifically about residents' uh, right to have a positive dining experience in facilities. Uh, meals are a very important part of our daily lives. Either it's a chance to sit down with family for a meal or have a social gathering. And especially, this is important for our residents in long-term care facilities. It uh, helps them with social interaction, uh, being feeling as a part of the community, in that facility, and of course, may to make sure that they get all nutrition they need. And especially, I am passionate about assisting those that need help with their meals. Of course, facilities try to keep residents as independent as they can for the longest time, but sometimes uh, residents' abilities vary from day to day or slowly decline. And this is why this is so important for staff at the facilities to make sure to help residents uh, to get all nutrition and all uh, hydration they need. And while assisting residents, um, they have to make sure that residents get the most positive experience, which means keep that eye contact with the resident keep the conversation going between staff and the resident and never stand while helping resident to eat. That all helps to stay, for resident to stay as healthy as they can for a long time. Irina, what great ideas. Um, and, and also, you know, again, very impactful to think about not having a good experience eating your dinner, eating your lunch every day, eating your breakfast. Um, I love what you said about never stand while you're assisting someone. Um, because obviously that makes you, the person that's being assisted feel like you're rushing through it and um, nobody wants that. So, um, you know, I, I just really appreciate both of you ladies sharing uh, what your passion about this job is because it's a hard job, but you can really find some joy, obviously, in, in what you're doing. And I really appreciate you bringing us this information that's basic that many folks probably don't think about. So thank you both for being with us today. I really appreciate you both. And thanks for all you do. Thanks for thank having you. us. Yep. Thank and, you. And folks, uh, we still have some more to talk about. These ombudsmen are awesome people and the best advocates in the world. And they really want to make sure you know about them. We have so much more to talk about. So don't go anywhere. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. 
Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Forty-five years, two packs a day. It's like eighty thousand dollars. I thought I was just hurting myself until I fell asleep in a chair with a cigarette. The whole house went up. I lost it all. I knew smoking was expensive, but I never thought it would cost me everything. The human heart, even at its strongest, it's a fragile muscle. Chest and arm pain, shortness of breath, are signs of a heart under attack. But three numbers can save a life. Dial 911 at the first sign of a heart attack. Quick response from medical experts can save your life. I was 45 and it happened to me, a heart attack. Dialing 911 saved Ryan's life. Now he's here and he's healthy. This message sponsored by Mission Lifeline Montana. Hi folks, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We've been talking about ombudsman today and we had some real life great ombudsman with us. Um, and in this segment, we're gonna be talking with Jamie LaProuse. Um, and Jamie is the regional ombudsman for areas four and five, uh, and she's based in Butte. Welcome, Jamie, glad to have you. Thanks for having me. Sure, so, okay. Um, let's just talk about, because we haven't really done this yet during the show, How? let's talk about all the different uh, counties that you actually serve uh, in your program, Jamie, because that's a lot of them. It is a lot. I service Beaverhead, Deer Lodge, Granite, Madison, Powell, Silver Bow, Broadwater, Gallatin, Jefferson, Lewis and Clark, Meager, and Park Whoa. County. Whoa! That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Um, how many facilities are in, in all of that area? So I have 55 assisted living facilities, nine, nine critical access hospitals, and 15, 16 skilled nursing facilities. Wow. How do you make it to all of the, uh, You must be on the run all the time on roller skates, probably. Well, I do have two locals, um, one local for area four and one local for area five. So you have, you get it, you have a hand getting some of the visits and stuff done. That's good. Um, so Jamie, I wanted to talk with you um, about the dignity and respect piece of the ombudsman um, program or experience, because it's real important. Uh, can you talk to us a bit about that? Yeah, dignity refers to the state of being worthy or honorable. And um, what are some of the resident rights regarding that and you know again i'm sorry we have to have this conversation but it's very important for people to remember that they don't lose their rights when they go into a facility do they no they do not they do have the right to privacy in their treatment and care of their personal tasks to be treated with dignity and respect at all times and have the choice of activities, schedules, and health care consistent with their care plans, and communication with the access to people and services outside the community. Sure. And you have a, you have a great example of, of that, uh, one of those. Can you, can you share that with us? Yes. I had a resident that I worked with that I went to go visit with at a facility and she was sitting in her wheelchair in the hallway and a staff member walked up behind her and just started pushing her out of the way without communicating with her. Wow. And, you know, um, years ago, I had, a, I had a, a person who was in a chair tell me that when someone else puts their hands on that chair, it's as if you're almost touching their body because it becomes a part of them. So when you're just moving somebody, you're, you're almost touching their body from their perspective. And that's not very respectful. 
No, it is not. And so your, you know, one of your passions is to continually work with w resident rights. And so that brings the question, what do the, how do the facilities fit into that? What do they have to do? So the facilities must ensure that you are treated as an individual and encourage you to participate in programs and services of your choice. They have to provide you with a safe, clean, and comfortable environment and your surroundings. Protect you from any kind of harsh or abusive treatment. Provide you with privacy in communicating and associating with people in and out of the facility and equal access to quality care. Yeah. And you also have a, a, a little example of that as well. Yeah, so one of the concerns that I hear most regarding resident care is that their call lights are on for 30 plus me minutes when they are in need of care. Right. And, and that's fairly, I mean, that's kind of common, the call light issue, isn't it? It is. It's unfortunate. Um, now, um, first, I guess before before we go any further, I've said it in every segment. I'm going to say it to you. How do we get a hold of you? Uh, just contact us by the one eight hundred number on the screen. Okay. And you just say what? My my mom needs help. My I need help. What I what what gets it started? Um, whatever the, your concern is, you can go ahead and give us a call and we can work with you regarding whatever that concern must be. Right. We can work with families, staff members, residents, friends. Okay. But Jamie, one thing that's real important um, to mention that I, that I think is real important is when you're advocating, you're advocating for that that uh, resident, aren't you? Not not everybody around them, not the CNAs at the facility or whatever. You're you're advocating for that person, isn't that correct? Yes. Yeah, so the ultimate goal would be to make sure that the resident's concern is brought up the way they want it brought up, right? And not the way the family or friends want it brought up. And also um, what that person hopes for as a resolution as opposed to what someone else wants. Correct. Right. Jamie, it's been so great having you. I, th it, the time went so quickly. I don't know where it went, but I really want to thank you for all you do out there. And thanks for being on today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Folks, these ombudsmen are absolutely wonderful people. Uh, they are, will advocate for you. And if you want to reach out, just call 1-800-551-3191. For Aging Horizons, I'm Kimmy Everman. Thanks for being with us. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.